This session will be an overview of DHIS2. We will start by introducing the dashboard. The dashboard is where we can place different analyses together for review. We will then show the user settings and profile. These allow us to customize the experience within the application for each individual user. We will then provide an overview of the maintenance application. This is where we can customize DHIS2 in terms of which data is collected and which outputs are created. We will also introduce numeric, event, and tracker data entry. We will discuss these concepts a little bit more both in this and other sessions. We will then introduce validation rules, which allow you to add mathematical rules to check your data. We will show standard reports and data approval, which allow you to create customized reports based on different templates, as well as approve the data within DHIS2. We will also demonstrate the use of pivot tables, charts, and maps, which allow you to output your data in various ways. We will discuss interpretations. These interpretations allow you to add additional context and begin a conversation about your data within DHIS2. And then we will discuss messaging, feedback, and sharing. This provides mechanisms to share your data, discuss your data, and discuss any problems within the system itself. Let's go ahead and get started with the session. This session is going to be an overview of the DHIS2 application. We will show you some of the features that are built in to DHIS2. In particular, we will focus on those features that we will be covering in this Fundamentals Level Academy. Typically, when we first log into DHIS2, we see what we refer to as the dashboard. The dashboard is a collection of various outputs that we can review together. You can see on this particular dashboard, there are a variety of different outputs available. All of these outputs are made within DHIS2 directly. We will show you how to create all of these outputs, as well as how to create these dashboards in later sessions. At the top of the page, you can change between the different dashboards that are available. The dashboards that each user sees is completely customizable. We can also share these dashboards with other users. We will get into both of these topics later on. In DHIS2, there are some features that allow us to customize our experience a little bit. If I go over the initials in the corner here and click on settings, we can actually alter some of the settings for the application. This is per user. This includes examples like the interface language, the database language, and the style of the application. Let's change the style to see what effect this has. We also have a tab for user profile. This allows us to update our own details. It's always a good idea to fill in the profile later on as this facilitates communication and follow-up. And then the last part is the account settings where we can of course update or change our password. If I go back to the dashboard, we can see how the style affects the application. In DHIS2, one of the key principles is that all the items that are made for either data collection or data output should be definable through the user interface. In DHIS2, we use the maintenance application to update the various items that we are collecting or the outputs that we are creating. We will discuss quite a few of these objects that are available in a lot more detail in other sessions. In DHIS2, there are multiple ways to collect data. There are three broad categories of data that DHIS2 can collect. This includes numerical or aggregated data, anonymous individualized data, as well as individual data that has some kind of identifier attached to the data. Let's show you an example of the numerical based data entry. In the numerical based data entry, we enter data by the structure of the system we're working with. This could be a health system or an organization, depending on how DHIS2 is being used. In this example, we have a health system hierarchy built in to DHIS2. This allows us to select, for example, a facility to enter data into. There are a number of different reporting forms that can be made in DHIS2. 
These can be simple reporting forms that are generated by the system itself, but we can also create more complex forms that more closely reflect paper-based forms that are being used in the field. We will discuss the creation of these datasets in a bit of detail later on. The next type of data that can be entered into DHIS2 is anonymous individual data. This can be, for an example, something like a facility survey or some type of line list that doesn't have any identifying information attached to it. In this example, we have a survey that's being entered by a facility. We can then enter the data for each individual facility and then receive the results through DHIS2. We can create different statistics and outputs based on the data that is entered. We will discuss this method of collecting data a little bit more later on. The last type of data entry is individual information that does have identifying characteristics. This means that we can identify the person by their name, by some type of unique identifier, their phone number, or any other identifying characteristics attached to that particular person. Note that this type of data entry can be extended beyond people and beyond the health sector, but in this example we are tracking a person. In DHIS2, you can actually register the person in a certain program or just in DHIS2 itself and register them in multiple types of services. And then you can collect information related to the services that they are receiving. In this example, we're registering a child to receive their set of immunizations. You can see that there are multiple identifiers available for this person, including their first and last name, the child number, and their mother's first and last name. These can all be used to help in identifying the child. They will then be tracked through their set of immunization services. Later on, we will go through an example where we register a person and track them through the various services that they receive. Once we've entered all our data into DHIS2, there are a couple different methods which we can use to check on the quality of the data. One of these methods is to check on mathematical rules that we build into DHIS2. This ensures that the data meets certain criteria when it's entered into the system. We can run this type of analysis all at once We can see that when we run this type of analysis, it brings up any issues with the data quality based on these rules that we've created. We will discuss this in a bit more detail in later sessions. In DHIS2, we can also create standard type reports that are based off different organizational or ministry templates. One of these tools is called a standard report. Using these types of standard reports, you can make your own customized outputs within DHIS2. While we won't discuss how to create these during the fundamentals level course, it's important to know that these types of reports are possible. We can also run data approval. This is the process of approving data within DHIS2. We can use data approval to approve data at any level within the organization that you're working with. This allows us to review the data electronically and then electronically approve this data as well. Once we've run some checks on our data to ensure that it's of quality, we can go ahead and create some outputs in DHIS2. There are several tools available in order to create these outputs. The ones we will be focusing on are the Pivot Table, Data Visualizer, and GIS. These allow us to make tables, charts, and maps, respectively. These types of outputs can be generated very quickly by DHIS2, as long as we have data entered into the system. Here's an example of a pivot table. We can see how quickly it appears. This is, of course, an example of a previous table that's already been created. But we will go over the ins and outs of creating these tables within DHIS2.
DHIS2 also supports the creation of different chart types. Once again, all of these charts are based on the data that's entered into DHIS2. Lastly, we have maps. There are quite a few different features available in the GIS application within DHIS. We will discuss them in more detail later on. But you can see here that we can create different outputs based on the data that's entered, just like for charts and tables. One of the interesting features in DHIS that allows you to extend the usability of these different analysis items is that we can add descriptions and interpretations. This allows you to provide a bit more context to the data that you're displaying. You can also share these analyses with other users in order to share what you found and start a discussion. DHIS2 also has some inbuilt tools in order to facilitate more private discussion. In DHIS2, you can write messages and write feedback. DHIS2 has an internal messaging application that allows you to message other users in the system. There is also a feedback system. The feedback system within DHIS2 allows those users who are managing the system to prioritize this feedback and respond to it as necessary. They can also have internal discussions about the problems and try to solve them before returning their response back to the user. We will discuss this feature in more detail later on. Now everything that's created in DHIS2 can actually be shared with other users. So we can decide actually who to share our different analyses with. We will discuss how to do this a little bit more later on. That has been a very quick overview of DHIS2. We will start going over these features in a little bit more detail in the following sessions.